Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we're going to talk about ADT bag. ADT stands for abstract data type. At the end of this video, I will be sharing an example of a related interview challenge problem for software engineering or a developer position or internship. It's important to watch this video in its entirety so you can fully understand the problem and its solution. Now let's take a look at a definition of ADT bag. The definition says that it's a finite collection of objects in no particular order and they can contain duplicate item as well. And the possible behaviors that it has, we can get the number of items in there, we can check for empty, add, remove objects from it. Let's look at bag as a vending machine. When you're dealing with a vending machine, you must understand the tasks that you're dealing with. You cannot access the inside of the machine. You can use the machine even though you do not know what happens inside. You can perform only tasks machines interface presents and it's usable even with the new items inside of it. Just like vending machine, ADT bag has the similar functions. You must adhere to the specifications of the operations of ADT. You can perform only tasks specific to ADT. You cannot access data inside ADT without ADT operations. You can use the ADT even if you don't know how the data is stored and it is usable even with new implementation. Now let's take a look at some other responsibilities. We can get the number of items currently in the bag. We can see if the bag is empty or not. We can remove the unspecified objects from the bag. If possible, we can remove an occurrence of a particular object from the bag. We can count the number of times a certain object occurs in the bag. We can test whether the bag contains a particular object or not. And we can look at all objects that are in the bag and we can access. Here are some of the benefits of using ADT bag in data structure. You can count on flexibility in element types. A bag allows you to store elements of different types, providing flexibility in the kind of data you can use and include. Dynamic size is another important uh, benefit of ADT bag. Bags dynamically resize to accommodate a varying number of elements, making them suitable for situations where the number of elements is not known in advance. They're efficient for counting as well. If you need to keep track of the frequency of elements, a bag is efficient for counting occurrences because it allows duplicates. Simplicity is another benefit of ADT bags. Bags provide a straightforward and easy to understand way to manage collections without the constraint or requirements imposed by other data structure like sets or lists. Other benefits of using ADT bag is no ordering constraints. Unlike lists or arrays, bags don't enforce any specific order on elements. This lack of ordering makes them suitable for scenarios where the sequence of element is not significant. But we have to keep in mind, if we are dealing with data structures or situations that we do need ordering, this can be a con and we're going to go over those in a little bit. Now, there are situations where duplicates matter, and that's another benefit of ADT bag. If your application requires handling duplicates, a bag is the appropriate choice since it allows the insertion of the same element multiple times. They're also useful in algorithm development. Bags can be useful in various algorithmic scenarios where the focus is on the frequency or presence of elements rather than their order. Another benefit of using ADT bag is the simplified API. Bags implementation, they offer a simplified set of operations such as adding, removing, checking for the presence of an element. And this simplicity can be beneficial in scenarios where you don't need more complex data structure. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages of using ADT bag. One of the important disadvantages are no order guarantee. Bags do not maintain any order of elements. If the order of insertion or any specific order is essential in the specific project that you're dealing with, a bag might not be the appropriate choice. Another disadvantage is limited retrieval operations. Bag implementations usually lack methods for accessing elements by their index, as seen in the list. If you need index access or specific ordering, a bag might not be the most suitable data structures. 
Another disadvantage is the limited information about elements. If you're working on a project that knowing more information about elements is important, this may be a disadvantage. Bags only provide information about the presence or absence of an element and do not store additional information. For example, priority or timestamp, none of those are going to be saved. These are associated with each element which cannot be saved when you're using bag. In scenarios requiring more elaborate data, a different data structure might be a good choice for you. Another disadvantage is no key value pairs. Bags typically store only the elements themselves without associating them with key value pairs. If your application requires such associations, you might need to consider other data structure like maps. Another disadvantage can be they're limited in complexity for certain algorithms. While bags are suitable for simple operations like insertion and retrieval, they might not be the best choice for complex algorithms that require specific ordering or intricate data relationships. Another disadvantage is handling duplicate by design. Bags inherently allow duplicates. If your application demands strict uniqueness, using a bag might require additional check to enforce uniqueness, or you might need a different data structure like a set. Another disadvantage may be the performance considerations. Depending on the implementation, bags might have performance implications for certain operations. For example, searching for an element in a bag may not be as efficient as in other data structures like trees or hash maps. Another disadvantage would be inefficiency in some operations. Certain operations, such as removing a specific element, might be less efficient in a bag compared to other data structures optimized for such operations, like linked list or trees. Another disadvantage is lack of sorting. Bags do not inherently provide sorting capabilities. If your application requires elements to be sorted based on certain criteria, you may need to consider a different data structure that supports sorting operations. Here's a look at the UML diagram for bag. As we've talked about it so far, we now know that we can find out what the current size of bag is. We can check to see if it's empty, we can add, we can remove, we can remove one occurrence of the duplicates, we can completely clear, and other operations as seen here. Now let's take a look at how this gets translated into a code. This Java interface for a class bags is the translation of the UML diagram that we had on the last slide. These methods in this program are going to show the operations that the bag can handle. For example, the very first one, public int get current size, it's going to check for the entries in the bag. The second one, the boolean is empty, it's going to look to see whether the bag is empty or not. And because it's a boolean function or method, it's going to return true if the bag is empty and false if it's not. The next method, the boolean add, is going to add a new entry in the bag and it's going to return true if the addition was successful and false if it was not. The t remove, the next function, it removes one unspecified entry from this bag. And the following, the last one, the boolean remove, it's going to remove one occurrence of a given entry from the bag and it's going to return true if it's successful and false if it's not. Moving forward, this is the function or method for clear. This will remove all the entries from the bag. Next is the frequency of the items or the uh, objects or given entry in the bags. So this will count the number of times a given entry appears in the bag and it's going to return the number of times an entry showed up um, in the bag. The next method, boolean contains, it's going to test whether this bag contains a given entry or not. And it's going to return true if the bag contains an entry and false if it's not. And the last one where it says to array, this will retrieve all the entries that are in this bag. And of course, if the bag is empty, the returned array is going to return empty. Okay, let's put into practice what we have been learning so far in this lecture. This is a Java program that shows the implementation of bags. Um, this is, I call, I created this package called bag ADT. You can call it whatever you want. And I imported two different libraries, the ArrayList and List. 
Next, we created, we start creating our class, which is public class piggy bank. The next two line is our member variable. One is private, the least, and that's because we don't want outside entities to have access. And then we have the public piggy bank, which is the one that is public and we want outside entities to be able to access it. So next, we're going to take a look at how many methods are in here and what methods. So just as an overview, we're going to have add coins, remove coins, count occurrences, which is going to be private. And I'll tell you guys in a second why. And then we're going to display the, the contents and of course, calculate the total value of coins that it's in this piggy bank. Before we start looking at the methods, I want to show you guys what this class is, class coin at the end of the program. This code represents a class named coin within the context of an abstract data type back program. So very first line, the class coin declares the name of the class, the private in denomination. This declares a private instance variable named denomination, which represents the value or denomination of the coin. The private access modifier indicates that this variable is only accessible within the coin class. And then the next line, the public coin int denomination as the parameters. Um, this is the constructor method for the coin class. It initializes a coin object with a specified denomination. The value of denomination is set to the value passed as an argument to the constructor. And then the very next line where it says public in get denomination, this is the getter method, the accessor, that allows other classes to retrieve the value of the denomination variable. It returns the value of the denomination for a given coin object. So overall, what this does, this coin class provides a blueprint for creating coin object with a specific denomination. Okay, now that we have seen the coin class, let's go back to our piggy bank class. Let's find out what we have over here. The methods in this piggy bank class are the add method. As you can see, the very first one is the public void add coins. And we're going to check to make sure that the count is greater than zero. And then we're going to use an for loop to add the coins to our bag. The very next method, we're going to remove coins from our piggy bank. And again, we're going to check to make sure the count is greater than zero. And if that's true, again, we're going to be using a for loop to add the to remove the coins from our bag. The next one, that's the one that I mentioned, it's private and we don't want outside entities to have access to this is the count occurrences. We want to find out how many of uh, what specific coins we're going to have inside of the bank and we're going to calculate that. The next method, we're going to be using an enhanced for loop to display the contents of the piggy bank. In the following one, we're going to calculate the total value of the coins in the piggy bank using another enhanced for loop. Okay, now let's take a look at our main. In this main, we're going to be calling all those methods in the piggy bank. First, we're going to start adding the coins. We have the 25 cents, 10 cents, and 5 cents coin, and the number in front of them represents how many of those coins are going to be in our bag. And then we're going to display the content of the piggy bank by calling the method display contents, the one that we were just talking about it up there in our piggy bank class. And then we're going to remove the coins that we want and we're going to display um, the content at the end of our program. So let's run this program and see what the output is going to be. So we're going to go ahead and run the program. And we're going to and this is the output of the program based on what we have added, removed, and displayed. Okay, so let's take a look at a possible interview question. So you're given two bags of integer represented by arrays. Each bag may contain duplicate elements and the order of the elements does not matter. Your task is to write a function in Java that returns an array containing only the unique elements that are present in at least one of the bags. The resulting array should not contain any duplicate. So the uniqueness is in question in here. And here is how we're going to be able to write this program. Just a quick note, sometime in interviews, they actually give you how they're going to test your program. 
And that's the purpose of what I have over here for you. If you can take a look at it, you can see the public static void main section of this program contains uh, some of the sample numbers that they're going to be in bag one and two. And the first part of it is just going to be the bag implementation that the class that we're going to be writing. So here's a possible solution. Um, in this solution, we have created a hash set. We called it unique element set to store the unique elements. We're going to iterate through elements in bag one and add them to the set. And then we're going to iterate through elements in bag two and add them to the set. And then we're going to convert the set to an array, which is called result in here to ensure the uniqueness. That's exactly what they asked us to do. And then we're going to return the result of array. This solution is going to make sure that the result array contains only unique elements present in at least one of the bags, and it doesn't contain any duplicates. The use of the set helps automatically handle uniqueness, and that's the reason we use set over here. And we have the main that's going to test the program to see if there are unique elements in bag one and two. This challenge assesses your understanding of backlight data structures, array manipulations, and handling duplicates. You can optimize your solution for time and space complexity as well. This concludes this session. Let me know if you have any questions.